Welcome to Moomoo Math and Science. In this video, I'd like to look at the six kingdoms that are used to classify life on Earth. The six kingdoms include bacteria, archaeobacteria, plant, protista, fungi, and animalia. These six include all living organisms on Earth. For many years, there were only five kingdoms. Kingdom Monera is now divided into two kingdoms, bacteria and archaeobacteria. Let's take a look at these six kingdoms and their characteristics. The Kingdom Monera consists entirely of single-cell organisms. Members of this kingdom are found almost everywhere on Earth. They are found in hot springs, cow stomachs, and almost every surface on Earth. All members of this kingdom do not have a nucleus or membrane-bound organelles. Therefore, they are classified as prokaryotes. They do have a cell wall, genetic material, cytoplasm, and ribosomes. Bacteria get their energy in many different methods. Some get energy from the sun, others get energy from chemicals like CO2, while others break down organic material. This kingdom is divided into two groups, archaeobacteria and bacteria. Archaeobacteria is found in extreme environments. For instance, some live in the stomach of a cow or hot springs the Dead Sea, or even swamps and marshes. They have a different type of cell wall than bacteria, and they are antibiotic resistant. Bacteria is also found almost everywhere. Bacteria is very important to life on Earth. Although some cause disease, most are very helpful to us. They break down food in our stomach help the nitrogen cycle, and even help make some of our food, like sauerkraut. We could not survive without bacteria. Bacteria can be classified by their shape. For instance, coccus has a sphere shape, spirillum has a spiral shape, and bacillus has a rod shape. Most members of the Monera Kingdom reproduce asexually in a process called binary fission, but some reproduce sexually in a process called conjugation. The kingdom is made up of multicellular eukaryotic organisms that get their energy from the sun. They are producers and they make up the bottom part of energy pyramids. Let's discuss a couple of traits that all plants have in common. First, since they are eukaryotic, they have a nu nucleus. The cells of plants have a cell wall made of cellulose. This cell wall provides protection and gives the plant cell shape. Plant cells also have a large central vacuole where it stores water and other materials. Plants have chloroplasts that contain chlorophyll and this is used to produce glucose, which we also call sugar. Plants take carbon dioxide plus water with sun light to create glucose and oxygen in a process called photosynthesis. There is a very wide range of plants. There are roughly 500,000 species of plants on Earth. Two major categories are vascular and non-vascular plants. Vascular plants have vascular tissue which allows them to grow larger in size. There are two types of vascular tissue. Xylem, which transports water throughout the plant, and phloem, which transports sugar throughout the plant. Think of the vas vascular tissue as our veins and arteries, and this allows some vascular plants to grow very large. Non-vascular plants move water and sugar around by osmosis. This limits the size of non-vascular plants. A common example would be moss. 
You can also classify, classify plants as plants with flowers and plants that do not have flowers. Angiosperms are plants that have flowers. They contain a carpel that has a stigma, style, and ovary, which is used in reproduction. Most of our vegetables and fruits we like to eat are angiosperms. Gymniosperms do not have flowers and they rely on airborne pollen to reproduce. Many of our trees like pine and fir trees are gymniosperms. There's a quick look at the kingdom, the kingdom plants. Protista. The kingdom Protista is one of the five major kingdoms. This kingdom is kinda the junk drawer kingdom because many of the organisms in this kingdom just don't fit anywhere else. Most are aquatic, but not all of them. Some are unicellular, but many are also multicellular. They are all eukaryotic, but some can reproduce sexually and others asexually. Some are heterotrophs, but others are autotrophs. Some are decomposers, and others are parasites. There are several major groups of protists. First, some are classified as animal-like. These heterotrophs can be parasites, predators, and some are classified by how they move. Sarcodines move by using a pseudopod. A common example is an amoeba. A mastioporans move by using a gel flagellum. Gerardia is an example of this. Ciliates move with hair-like structures. Take a look at this video of the amoeba and a paramecium, which is a ciliate, moving. practice photosynthesis, but they don't have roots or leaves. One common example is algae. Some algae is unicellular, but kelp is an algae and is very large. Other plant-like protists include euglenoids, which move with a flagella, plankton, and diatoms, which look like glass. And finally, some protists are fungus-like. These protists are decomposers. Common examples are slime molds and water molds. So there you have a quick overview of Kingdom Protista. Kingdom Fungi is made up of mushrooms, mold, yeast, and lichen. Fungi are very important to life on Earth, and many work with plants in a symbiotic relationship. The following are some basic fungi facts. Fungi have a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles, so they are considered eukaryotic. Most fungi are heterotrophs and get their energy from other organisms. Most are unicellular, but some, like yeast, is unicellular. Fungi cannot move about. Fungi may look like plants, but they are not plants, and they are different from plants in several ways. Almost all fungi do not have chlorophyll, so they cannot practice photosynthesis. They reproduce with spores, not seeds. Many fungi have cell walls made of chitin instead of cellulose like plants. Molds have cell walls of cellulose, so they are an, are an exception. Many fungi break down decaying matter and absorb nutrients using a network of fibers called hyphae. Hyphae are tube-like structures that grow and cover a food source, which allows them to digest and absorb nutrients. Many fungi, like mushrooms, have a visible fruit which is easily seen, and a mass of hyphae called a mycelium, and most likely this mycelium is hidden from view. There are four main types of fungi. The first is zygomycota, and many of these fungi are molds. They produce spores on the tips of their hyphae. A common example is bread mold. 
Next are club fungi. They have a dome-shaped part where reproductive spores are produced. Common examples are mushroom. Next are sac fungi. These fungi produce reproductive spores in a sac-like structure. Common examples include yeast, mildew, and lichen. And finally, you have the imperfect fungi. This group is like your junk drawer of fungi. The fungi that don't really, really fit anywhere else go here. However, each of these fungi reproduce asexually. Athlete's foot is an example. And finally, fungi can reproduce both sexually and asexually. Thanks for watching, and I hope to talk about the animal kingdom. The kingdom Animalia is made up of many organisms we encounter daily. Your pet dog belongs to this kingdom, along with fish, cats, humans, and many other types of animals. There's a very wide range of animals in this kingdom, but all animals have these common traits. All animals are eukaryotes, which means they all have a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. They are all multicellular organisms. All are heterotrophs, or in other words, they cannot produce their own food. They must eat another organism. And finally, almost all animals can move. Sponges, some sponges cannot move, so that might be an exception. There are two major categories of animals. The vertebrates, which have a backbone, and the invertebrates that do not. Invertebrates make up the largest amount of animals on Earth. They include sponges, nadarians, which have stinging cells such as a jellyfish, many types of worms, in fact there's thousands of species of worms, mollusks, which include a squid or octopus, arthropods, which include the insects, echinoderms, which are starfish and sea urchins. Vertebrates, on the other hand, have a backbone. Examples include these strange fish called lancelets and lampreys, many other types of fish, amphibians, such as this frog, reptiles, which include snakes, many, many birds, and even mammals, which we are. Animals are found on every continent on Earth, and they have adaptations that help them survive. Thanks for watching. I hope that helps with the animal kingdom. And remember, Moo Moo Math uploads a new math or science video 